This tiny home video is brought to you by Rad Power Bikes. Hi, my name is Alex and this is Zeppelin 3. Let me show you inside. Okay, so welcome to my kitchen. I have a nice deep sink, which I love, and um, this faucet is super flexible and I can even throw it out the window um, if I want to shower outside, which is a nice option. Uh, the typical Berkey, I think this is the smallest one, which is great for just one person. Um, and then I installed these little rods that have hooks and um, little baskets that clip onto them. They're from Ikea, so I use these to store my toothbrush, you know, my face wash, um, and then this little bag for fruits and vegetables. Over here I have my propane stove, my little um, tea kettle that I use for my pour over coffee every day, and then another one of those rods that I use for my cooking utensils. Um, and then in the drawers below, this is kind of just my junk drawer. Uh, there's some other cooking supplies in here, more spices, things like that. Um, this is basically all of my plates, bowls, Tupperware, things like that. And then the bottom one is all pots and pans. And I think I could condense the pots and pans a lot, but they're just regular house pots and pans. Um, so they have the regular handles. They take up way too much space actually, but uh, they work for me right now. Maybe eventually I'll invest in, in some, uh, some more collapsible ones, but for now they're good. Uh, and then up above, I have these two cabinets that actually open downward. I added these leather poles, which I love um, both the look of and the functionality. This is just all of my food. And this is um, all of my, well, my lack of cups. Uh, I used to have a lot of glass cups and actually yesterday I took a turn and went over a bump and all of the glassware fell out and shattered everywhere. So I decided that was the end of glassware for me. Um, so now I just have plastic and metal things up here. I ordered these magnetic spice containers from Amazon uh, and they're a great option just to save drawer space. And then my refrigerator pulls out um, from right here. It's a chest fridge and it has a divider so you can use it as all fridge or put the divider in and it splits um, fridge and freezer. All right, so this is my storage area for just a ton of miscellaneous stuff. Um, I have a lot of, you know, like lotions, products, things like that, uh, notebook, my Bluetooth speaker, which a lot of times I use while I'm driving because I don't have um, a stereo system built in. So I'll just throw it on the dashboard. On this shelf, I have uh, binoculars, my makeup bag, some other random stuff. Uh, and then these plants are fake, which I've just put here basically to distract from the mess that this usually is. Um, and then down here, more products and easy access treats for Arlo for uh, the rare times that he's being a good dog. <laughs> uh, down here, I have a basket that has all of my cords for my electronics. And then these built-in cubbies, I have um, my drone, GoPro, laptop, iPad, basically all um, things that need to be charged. There's a plug right here, so I can usually um, keep them in their slots here while they're charging. Arlo's basket of toys, which stays here, and he just helps himself all day long and takes out whatever he wants to play with. Under the um, seat cushions here, I have more storage, which is great. It's nice, deep space um, and allows me to keep a lot of my winter gear uh, in those vacuum seal bags, as well as some other dry good foods and things that I just don't access that much. So I had always been interested in tiny homes and then I started to see a lot of things online about van life. And uh, during COVID, I think everyone felt the same feeling, but I started to feel cabin fever, not just of my house, but sort of my whole life. You know, I was working remotely um, and I, I wanted a big change. And then uh, my mom actually passed away of breast cancer. And that was kind of the catalyst that I really needed to say, okay, this is the time um, I'm gonna do it. So I quit my job. Um, I sold, I don't know, probably 70% of my stuff, including my car, got rid of my apartment, all of that. Um, and it, it's really been an adjustment to kind of become more minimal. I, 
I think a lot of people think you move into a small space and instantly you're a minimalist and that's definitely not the case. Um, I would say it took a, a while, I'm still, still learning, but now at the three month mark, I'm starting to say, okay, I really don't need to buy that thing. And you know, yes, this thing is trendy and cute, but do I need it? Does it, do I not already have something that serves that purpose? Um, so that was kind of the change I was looking for. Um, I, I was stressed with all of the stuff I had and it's been really great cutting down on all of that. Okay, so right under here, I have a pullout table that I use to eat at, but I also use it as a desk um, to work on my computer. The only complaints I have about it is that the tracks right here sometimes get grease on my clothes, but it usually always comes out. Um, but yeah, that's a really nice option, especially for just one person. And then under here, I have a nature's head composting toilet that pulls out. Um, and I've really liked that a lot. I only use it for number one. A lot of people do both, but I just haven't been in a situation where I've needed to. So, um, but yeah, that's a, a great option, um, to have a toilet on board for when you need that. So this is Arlo. Uh, and if you've heard him chewing on this bone, this entire video, uh, I gave this to him to keep him busy and now it has stained all of my bedding, which I did not expect, but, um, that is part of having a puppy in a bus. Uh, which still not sure I entirely recommend that. I definitely recommend having a dog, but a puppy is a whole nother animal. So, uh, but yeah, for the most part, he's a good boy. Uh, he is only six months old, so still learning some manners and still a lot of growing to do. Up here, I have two cabinets that I use for clothes storage and I utilize the packing cubes a lot. I just order them on Amazon to keep my clothes organized. So those are great. And then um, behind the bed over here, I have two more cabinets that open up and they're actually really deep. So I'm able to fit a lot of clothes in there. And I would say that of all the clothes that I brought with me, I've probably only wore, worn maybe 30 or 40% of them. Um, I, I think it will be interesting when I'm done living in this bus to make a pile of all the things I never even wore. I would be surprised um, if it's not the bigger pile um, compared to the things that I have worn. So you really don't need that many things. I wear the same outfit every every three days I probably repeat so <laughs> uh, but that's that's the, one of the benefits of always being on the move is no one ever sees you like two days in a row so uh, they can never really uh, notice that you're wearing the same thing <laughs> this mattress is a queen size uh, and it's huge way more space than I need Arlo and I fit in here comfortably with room to spare um, and I actually usually in this corner I have what I call the heap uh, which is just a huge pile of clothes, bags, usually layers like sweatshirts and fleeces and things like that, that uh, I reach for so often that they never actually get put away. I cleaned it up a little bit and shoved all the bags into one bigger bag, but uh, I would say typically this takes up like mm, almost a quarter of the bed. So today's a good day for the heap. And then I have quite an extensive hat collection. Um, not having a shower, I tend to go to Planet Fitness, I don't know, maybe every four days or so. Um, and so if my hair is looking a little rough, I just throw on a hat. They're a great option to have. Um, and I think they also look pretty cute. So Arlo has never slept in a house. I got him two days after I got the bus and he obviously adapted well. I mean, it's really all he's ever known, but uh, it, raising a puppy on your own and on the road is definitely a challenge. Um, he's a mountain dog mix and growing super fast. So at first I used to have a little crate for him right here uh, and he outgrew it in like three weeks. And I said, okay, dude, that that's the end of crate training. You're, you're on your own now. So uh, it's been a little bit challenging to, to get some structure in his life when we're always on the move and everything's always changing, but he's seriously the best companion. Um, not a great road trip partner. He never has playlist recommendations, but uh, at least he's, he's always cute and he's surprisingly good protection, even though he's still a puppy. All right, so this is my garage, which is 
insanely big. I know it looks super full, but there's actually a ton of room back here. Um, so this is where I keep all sorts of uh, extension cords, especially if I need to plug into shore power. I keep my hose to fill up my water tank, as well as all my shower stuff, laundry stuff, uh, all my outdoor gear, sleeping bag, workout things. And this is also where my 46 gallon water tank is as well as my whole electrical system. So I have 200 amp hour lithium batteries and 400 watts of solar on the roof. Um, I also keep the diesel tank for the diesel heater is back here and then tons of extra food for Arlo. So on this door here, I keep my regular hybrid bike and then back in this corner, I fold up my rad power electric bike and throw that back there. Um, and honestly, I really never reach for my regular bike. The e-bike is amazing in cities, um, especially when you're exploring a new place and I don't wanna move the bus. Say I find a good parking spot and um, I wanna run into town or something like that. And I don't know the hills in the area. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to take my regular bike on it. I just um, pull out the e-bike and use that instead. And that has been a lifesaver for me. I've learned that it's hard to motivate myself to do things when I'm on my own. So um, specifically, say there's a hike, right? And uh, it's a little bit longer than I might be comfortable with or a little bit harder than I might be comfortable with. It's kind of easy when you're by yourself to say, mm, now I'll just skip it or I don't have time for that today or um, you know, make up some excuse. Whereas when you're with other people, you usually have that group camaraderie and kind of that push to do things. Um, so I've definitely had to learn how to push myself. Um, but one of the biggest things I've learned about myself is just how little I need. If you asked any of my friends before I did this, I was the last person that anyone thought would, would be able to live this lifestyle. I was, you know, too materialistic, far too high maintenance. I had so many products and the thought of living without a shower seemed like that was never something that I could do. Um, and now, I mean, this is so comfortable. I don't, I hardly ever miss having a shower. Um, and I've just learned that I really don't need that many things and that experiences are what make me a lot happier. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you wanna follow along with my journey, my Instagram is Adventures of Alex and Arlo, and we hope to see you on the road sometime.